So as you can see, we have been speaking about OpenAI Whisper and its amazing power to do fine tuning uh, demonstrated on my mother tongue. I slightly modified the uh, title of this talk. So it's always a pleasure to speak in your home country, like home place, like this is Kuchi, is my hometown. Uh, so today, uh, thank you all for turning up. You know, it's a great audience to see uh, all of you have turned up. Turn up and, uh, so today I'll be talking about uh, a few things on what is the AI is for some of its features, and then we'll be talk, diving into how to do fine tuning. I won't be talking much on how to do fine tuning and you know, to prove that finally, like, okay, fine tuning whisper models can give you fantastic results. Uh, can you hear me at the back? Is it fine? Okay, thank you. So, a bit about myself. Uh, myself, I'm an AI engineer and team leader at Sendinio. In my free time, I do some more four stuff. Uh, I am a volunteer at one of the open source organizations called Swaruta Nagarajan Abhidari. And yeah, I'm not affiliated to open so before starting this talk, like nothing in this talk is generated. You know, I know now LLMs are as a hype, so this is a thoughtful talk. And uh, you know, if I do something generated, I will explicitly mark as it's explicitly from an LLM. Um, also, I would prefer to take questions at the end of my talk. So uh, please give <laughs> note it down uh, if you have any questions. So, uh, first of all, one small question. Who all have you heard about OpenAI Whisper? Okay, that is a lot more people than I expected to see. Like, so, you know, OpenAI as an organization, we have released a lot of wonderful things over the past few years, 2017 onwards, they have been doing a lot of stuff. But one of the cool stuff they released in the open source world. Because they have now nowadays we call them in the host communities as like close AI also because now they don't release open source code anymore. But, but now they have a wing of open source as well, like and they release this whisper in September 21, 2022. So this description is generated by uh, GPT-4. So I asked GPT-4 explain what is opening AI whisper to a five-year-old kid. You know, in this audience, I don't see any five-year-old kids, so I'm not going to <laughs> explain it in that way. You know, simply speaking, Whisper is basically a speech-to-text model, and it's uh, you know, it does uh, it doesn't support just in English; it supports in almost 99 languages, and it was a phenomenal innovation, I would say, in terms of audio domain because with this single model, like a lot of new things came, uh, and it is not just for speech-to-text alone, it supports uh, speech-to-text translation as well, transcription, language identification, and few more tasks. So these are the five models which are released by OpenAI. So it has tiny, big, small, medium, and large. Uh, after this paper was released, two, three months after, like they released a large V2 model also, which is the paper they gave, like was trained for, like, 3x more times or something like that on the same data set. Uh, so Whisper, if you look at this diagram, you will see that it performs phenomenally well in English speech recognition. You can see that it's in this paper they have described it as company A, company B, company C, and all those things. Uh, I have tested a few companies, so I don't want to review that. But you know, some of the multiple open so uh, like paid commercial alternatives, they have really outperformed in English. Like NVIDIA SDG is also something they have offered. And it does not just in English at all, it supports uh, trained on 99 languages. Even though it's trained on 99 languages, I won't say it performs well in all the 99 languages. Uh, so they have released a Whisper API a few months back, and they, in that, they just supported 59 languages. And my mother tongue, Malayalam, is not. Then another cool feature of Whisper is like it runs in uh, almost any device. Like you can see that Whisper CTP, there was there was a lot of open source work. Since it was released in open source in like an MIT license, a lot of cool stuff was built on top of it. Uh, by and this is Whisper CTP, and 
you know, support to run in a lot of platforms. It, you know, those before when it was really just run in a GPU, but now it runs in on the same device. I don't think. Then there are a lot of open source community clicking as well, like it supports a word level timestamps, fine tuning, speaker directization. So even though this thing was just supported only for speech to text, like people built on top of it so that like a lot more stuff can be done with these community clickings. So let me uh, dive into what is fine tuning. Uh, so fine tuning a particular model basically means that okay, we already have a large model which is trained on a large corpus. So consider this diagram per se. So this is like uh, a Wikipedia language model. So this Wikipedia language model is now trained on a data set for Wikitext under entry. And if you want to fine tune on your specific data set or something like that, you can first train a language model on your particular task and then do a classification. Or what task you want to perform it really well, you can actually do it. Uh, so this is what is fine tuning. And uh, you know, uh, now LLMs are a hot topic. Uh, I know GPT, the, with GPTs, like the whole thing of whether fine tuning is still relevant is a thing like because like, uh, you know, GPT-4 models and stuff like that prove that prompting can also do good things. But you know, I just wanted to say that fine-tuning is still relevant. Vedi William, who is a first AI community leader, uh, he said this like, you know, now it has been like the new training for a while for a lot of first AI folks like me, but you know, it is always established as a new training. So now if you want to do training, like fine-tuning is the most of the like, is our training which we do. Uh, in open, you know, in at least small scale. So, what are the steps to do fine tuning in this? Part? So, if you want to fine tune uh, Visco models, uh, I am not going to cover this in my talk, but there is this wonderful article written by Sanjit Gandhi. Uh, you can check this like fine tune Visco for multiple multilingual ASR with transformers, and it has mentioned a set of steps on how to fine tune it. So, like okay, preparing the environment, you know, loading data set, and like some blocks of code for feature, feature extraction, optimizer, and stuff like that. And with that, like you can fine tune for your particular case. So uh, now let me talk about Malayalam. So Malayalam, obviously, is my mother tongue. It is having 38 plus million speakers, and I think this. Uh, Thing was based on 2011 census and it's spoken in Kerala, Lakshadi, Puducherry, and you know, where are the Malayali diaspora is there, which is a very large number. So there is a lot of people who speak and engage in Malayalam in the, you know, even in abroad also. And one thing about Malayalam, which makes it very interesting language, is like uh, it's a morphologically complex language in terms of NLP. Like it is way more complex than like languages like English, Finnish, Estonian, and stuff like that. You know, I'm not going to prove it in this talk, but if you want to learn it, you can learn it from this paper, like quantitative analysis of morphological composite of another language done by Kavya Manohar. This is a wonderful paper. You know, I definitely would recommend you to check it out to see that like okay, Malayalam can also do wonderful things. So. Uh, so Malayalam, uh, so there was this wonderful event which was created by the Hugging Face team to fine tune Visco models on your mother tongue. And Malayalam, you know, as you, uh, in OpenAI Whisper, it is the performance of OpenAI Whisper according to the Appendix B 2.2, right? Like Appendix B 2.2, like you see word array. I won't explain what is word array. Uh, but if you look at the various model weights or stuff like that, you can say that like in ASR terms or ASR metrics, you can equate this to zero percent accuracy because it is so bad. Like word of weight is like a metric, and accuracy of a word of weight is usually hundred minus WDR. So for Malayalam, it is negative. <laughs> what do you say? Like that is the it's so worse in it. Like people generally in commercial terms we usually calculate it as 100 minus WDR and its accuracy is so bad. Uh, 
based on the whisper paper. And this is stuff, I'm not just making it up, like it's obviously published in the whisper paper itself. You can check this page number also. Uh, so, um, so during this whisper event, which was a fantastic event, we fine tune a lot of models in Malayala. All of a sudden, a lot of members in open source community during this two week event created a lot of models in Malayala also. And uh, one model was particularly interesting because it's called 11.49 and a lot of models code 25 and stuff like that. And according to this Malayala Whisper event, the winning model was for common voice, it was Tenel Whisper Medium ML, and Flows, which was another data set, was Parambalas like this first format. Uh, one thing I wanted to say is like uh, for Fluors, like tenant model didn't work. We don't. Uh, but personally, I was not convinced. Why I was not convinced is because like okay, all of a sudden from negative accuracy you are getting achieving 11 percentage, which is fantastic. And in Malayalam there was no yardstick or any previous accuracy papers or like works which said okay. We had this much accuracy in the previous work. Uh, there were one work which I found it interesting, but that also it was like ETWR or something like that, the 20 percent accuracy you can think. And you know, since the Malayalam is a very complex language, as I say, morphologically complex language, and achieving 30 percent WR was itself a big deal according to me. But the main reason uh, why I started, I was not convinced was like the winning model, like if you see in the in this. The model card, the word weight was reported as 38.62 and the character weight was reported as 7.32. And this is what he did, like he just manually made a git commit and changed the, like the hugging tree's way of evaluating models was, okay, anyone can, okay, in this metrics anyone could have set the value as like 11.49 and corresponding to that, like if I had put it as a one percentage or something like that, I would have been the winner also. <laughs> So, you know, I was not convinced by it and uh, that was the reason why I thought, okay, let me just see whether uh, to test whether this 10 percentage or this 11 percentage FDR is actually possible or not. And so that I decided, okay, for this analysis, I am going to choose two datasets. One is the Common Voice 11 Malayalam dataset as well as the SNC's Malayalam speech corpus dataset. So, uh, a bit about metrics for evaluating ASR models. I'm not getting into detail of it, but like, you know, ASR evaluation simply relies on two things. That is basically, okay, for a particular audio file, there is a ground rule or like, okay, what is actually being spoken in that particular audio file? That is called as ground rule. And what is the model actually producing? That is called as ASR output. So, uh, this is basically the metric for evaluating ASR models. And there are, in the open source, like, in the world, like there are two metrics which are widely related as good enough, that is word of weight and character of weight. So I decided to okay, evaluate based on word of weight and character of weight for Malayalam. So a bit about what was the methodology I used for like benchmarking. So what I did was like I thought of first creating a Python library so that like you know any transform of these whisper models can also be benchmarked. And then I chose like okay, in with this library, like I will calculate for this particular data set, the word array, the character array, the model size, and the time taken also. Since I am an ML engineer, I am usually interested in latency also. And all these things I will build it and also I will, you know, it is obviously a reproducible open. So like I will whatever results I produce, I will store it in a data set as well. So this was basically the methodology I used for benchmarking. So yeah. So that's why I decided, okay, uh, it's time for a new adventure. Sometime in, I found this thing last year, in November 2022. December, uh, no, December actually I found it. Like even it was held in December 2022. I found time to do it like in March or something, March 2023 or something like that to create a new Mariana project for ASA benchmarking. So a bit about what I was the dependencies and stuff like that. Since uh, Whisper is now having a hard dependency, like uh, most of this fine tuning was also done in Transformers. So I used the Hugging Faces Fantastic Transformers library and the datasets library. Jibo was used for calculating the word of weight. Whisper normalizer, normalizer was like a Python library which I created personally because um, you know normalizing stuff is also very important when we are like 
uh, doing like that. Like standardizing stuff is very important when we are comparing the ground truth as well as the ASR output. And few more libraries were also used. And uh, all this development I used in uh, a cool secret tool like I developed for, I used with NPDEV. You know, a lot of people don't use NPDEV, uh, but I'm a big fan of it. And uh, you know, I was following a not too full of project for the over. I was using Jupyter, Jupyter Labs for my development. So a bit into the code also. Um, so if you look at this code, like okay, I had this function. This I'm just showing you how I benchmark for common voice data sets. So you know, for this lot common voice data set. Uh, data set, I just loaded the data set from cutting face using the run key data set function, then did some pre-processing stuff and so that like all of this being normalized in a proper way. Uh, so if you want to evaluate a particular model, I brought a function called evaluate underscore whisper model common voice and you know if it is an open AI whisper large, I just used it. Uh, if you are curious about the code also, I'm just showing the code also for the evaluate whisper model common voice as well. So, you can see that in this evaluate this for uh, this for model common voice, like okay, what what does the model need, which is specified in the hugging face. Then like okay, in order to download that particular model name, I use this hugging face pipeline approach, uh, which by SI is equal to pipeline automatic speech recognition and model is equal to model name, and then I loaded my data set. Did a for who controls the data set so that like I get the predictions and the actual references and store it in a list in Python. Uh, then I stored all my results in Panda's data frames. Uh, then what I did was like I calculated the order weight and the character order weight, uh, not just uh, for the whole data set or not, I calculated for each sentences also. So that was also done. Uh, then, okay, R the DR was calculated the whole, the whole okay, it was common by data set for the whole preferences and the predictions for the would have read and the character read for those run. Uh, and finally, I stored the model size also uh, for the, you know, that is something which I was interested in. And finally, this data set was stored in bucket files so that like, I can build my data set in a proper way. And finally, I created a new memory also. You know, in this code, maybe I mean, <laughs> you know, if you have any questions till now, maybe you can just ask. Any doubts in my code or something like that? No doubts, right? Can I move forward? Okay. So this was the approach, or what you can say, this was the methodology for benchmarking the model. So I decided, okay, I will benchmark these six well fine-tuned models in Malayalam along with the six model versions released by OpenAI. And uh, on common voice data set, uh, I calculated that by like, okay, uh, I built uh, okay for so this was the results. Let's look into the world of rate. So if you look at the this model produced by OpenAI, uh, it is like 100.06 OpenAI is for modern model. And the best model in Malayalam for common voice nine better set was 10 is from 80 mm model. For the character rate in common voice data set itself, the best model was, you know, OpenAI is for last week too. Best model in Malayalam after point two weeks was 5.01. So uh, that's a fantastic jump. And this is something totally surprising. So I just tweeted out like, hey, I have been working on benchmarking for a few Malayalam ASR models and you know the results have been far better than I expected. And Kavya Manabha, who is uh, a Bolivia SNC and an active member, she has been working in the speech domain in Malayalam specifically for five years. And she said, okay, there has never been a benchmark for comparing Malayalam ASR models. So you know, it was fantastic to do something for the first time that too in my mother, mother tongue. So, yeah. so, based on this inspiration, I started working on this Malayalam speech corpus data set also, which was released by XMC. And uh, here also fantastic results. Uh, uh, for Whisper, best model of large video, it was 100.27 mm. Then this model features performed really well in this data set. Uh, 2.2. We have some hypothesis on why he got this much results. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, uh, when I met him, he told me he has just used the test data set only. So that's all good. That's all good. Uh, and the character rate for this data set is also like 102.4 for OpenAI's Whisper and 
is this model for character upgrade is also from 1.2 percent. So if you are interested in any, uh, you know, this is a GitHub project like github.com for and and if you want to reproduce these results, you know, for essence, these Mariana Corpus data set, the data set is available as hugging face data set and this particular link from both Mariana speech corpus data set as well as common voice data set. So what are your future ideas? Uh, so the future ideas for me particularly is like I'm interested to build something more like, you know, if possible, I want to expand this uh, similar to the open and learn leader mode which is found for Mariana speech models generally, so it should have like, you know, for various approaches, like uh, similar to this open and learn leader mode, okay. For whisper, we have this much approaches. What is the best performance for Kalvi model? What is the best performance for meta analysis model? I write down my own library has a hard dependency from transformer, so I know it can't be extended to a bit further. You know, it's kind of vendor open situation. So, you know, this is in the future plans. So, finally, just yeah, like it seems in Mariana also we have achieved fantastic results and for based on fine tuning this new model. And the best model after benchmarking was Panel Super Medium and both in the Common Voice 11 data set as well as the Mariana Speech Corpus data set. And it seems for us a new data set models. It seems, okay. <laughs> you know, I just put it like that, right? And probably, I think this is the first work on benchmarking in Mariana data set, at least in Whisper data set as I am. Whisper models are, as much as I am aware. So you can also do in your languages also, like your mother tongue or any other local source languages you can also do. And probably you might be the first person to do it in your language. So with that, I'm concluding my talk. Uh, thank you, everyone. Okay, so what does Daniel say? Why his model became so good at this? What is his conclusion about this? How, how, do, how, do, how do you make this that good? Like, you should ask this question to Daniel. Like, I have met him just for 10 minutes only. So, but I have a hypothesis. Uh, that is uh, the difference between the meaning model and the other model is, uh, you know, other models was like, he used more data. Like he basically used a uh, particular corpus, which he already knew because he was an author of a paper. So he used a uh, ETS data set which was almost 50 over his thinking. So that corpus is, in my opinion, like was the reason why his model performs phenomenally well. Uh, maybe phenomenally well, I will but you know that is my hypothesis at the moment. You should ask that then for for the sequence. <laughs> you know, I couldn't uh, ask much about the sequence. So there are five corpuses used for this thing. Maybe you know we can't uh, be sure about it, right? Um, so train this data, like you said, this corpus is there. Is there any open source version? Are people actually working on expanding this corpus as well? There are open source versions, obviously. Uh, yeah, how did, I mean, now what did you use? Um, you know, I just use common voice data set only, and I realized that data set was a major problem here. So when I tried training with common voice data set, what do you do? So we really, we really need more data set. So like yeah. this data set is one phenomenal place where like we can do, uh, you know, get good ideas. Yeah, we need to do that, right? Good to do that. So when you were doing this uh, training, uh, so can you just give us an idea like how many steps were involved, how was the step size for each of these? Cool, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this, uh, as I told you in this blog post, if you just follow, like that, 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 that. Oh, you it's have that. You know, it's just like everyone can follow, you know. But the thing is like, GPU computer is a major <laughs> problem because of this thing like, my tuning itself, it took, uh, I was running in some AM 600 machines or something like that, and it took like seven days, seven hours or eight hours or something like that. <laughs> few dollars it built me. So G I think GPU compute and uh, data set is now the main reason if you want to improve the accuracy. Yeah, right. yeah. But really we don't have Malayalam good data sets for Malayalam, that is a problem. Yes, yes. But you know I might work on something interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, you should probably do something all of us together, right? Yes, so yes, 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 exactly. You know there is, uh, you know I can just talk it very openly here because this is not a new idea or something like that. Uh, there is this wonderful paper which was released a few weeks back by Meta, not a few weeks back, it was Meta in May or something it was released. And the one great thing they did about that paper was like, they leveraged Christian texts, like New Testament and Old Testament, and they were recording also. 
So this recordings, if you have this, like you can get phenomenal with it, right? If you got money, Bible obviously just there in the letters and speech text is not there. And you know, you don't need to worry about the ground rules and stuff like that also. Uh, so that is a fantastic idea. Personally, I have found a data set also in Malayalam. Like for my business recordings also, I found it for recordings. Uh, I need to <laughs> work from our audience. Yeah, right. Any other questions? So one more question about fine tuning. Is it still very manual kind of a process now? Do you have to like physically uh, fine tuning? Kind of. You know, this is this is like uh, it's not manual. Right? Like we just need to run the GPUs for a few hours. You know this. So there's no human intervention, like uh, some kind of reinforcement going on, feedback going on, no, no feedback, no feedback, not like analysis or something like that. Fine tuning, that approach doesn't mean it's not human. What's your take on, say, any of